Hello, I'm Dr. Russell T. Warren, and I've made this video to explain my research into high school grade point averages. In this video, I will summarize a study that my co-authors and I conducted and published in the journal NASP Bulletin in 2014. My co-authors were Chanel Nagaishi, Michael K. Slade, Paul Hermesmeyer, and Elizabeth Kimberly Peck. To understand this study, it is first important to explain high school grade point averages. In most American high schools, students earn grades ranging from A to F, and then those grades are combined to form a grade point average, or GPA. In traditional GPA system, an A is worth 4 points, a B worth 3 points, a C is worth 2 points, a D is worth 1 point, and an F is worth 0 points. So each grade is converted into a number of points, which are then averaged together to produce a GPA. I have an example here of a student with a B in English, an A in Math, and a B in Biology. The student get 3 points for each B and 4 points for the A. These average together to give a GPA of 3.33, which is about a B plus in most systems. This is an unweighted GPA because the value for any particular grade, for example, 3 points for each B, is the same regardless of the course that the grade was earned in. In a weighted GPA system, however, the number of points a student earns towards their GPA depends on the course they earn the grade in. Usually this means giving extra points for students who are in advanced courses like honors or AP classes. So if our hypothetical student earned one of their B's in an honors biology course, the school may give them four points instead of three because earning a B in honors biology takes about as much effort as earning an A in a regular non-honors course. This is called a weighted GPA because harder courses are given more weight than regular courses. In our example here, the student would have a weighted GPA of 3.67, which reflects the more difficult course load than the student who did not take an honors course but earned the same grades. This 3.67 GPA is about the equivalent of an A- in most systems. There are many ways to weight GPAs, and sometimes which courses receive additional weight varies from district to district and from school to school. Although weighting GPAs is common in some areas, there is very little scientific research on whether weighted or unweighted GPAs are better. My co-authors and I decided that the best way to measure how good GPAs were was to see which type of GPA was better at predicting college success. Basically, in our study, we put weighted and unweighted GPAs head-to-head -to, -head to see which one was the better method of predicting success in college. Our sample consisted of 710 students in the Joint Admission Medical Program in Texas. This is an educational program that encourages students from communities that have a shortage of, phys of physicians to become doctors and then return to their hometowns to practice medicine. All of the sample members were low income and, and they were disproportionately members of minority groups. As part of the admissions process, students must submit their high school transcripts. Almost all of the applicants attended high school in Texas, which is a state where most high schools report weighted GPAs. In our study, we took the school's weighted GPA and compared it to an unweighted GPA that we calculated to see which one was better at predicting college success. We define college success in four ways. College GPA, completing the undergraduate pre-medical education program, scores for the Medical College Admissions Test, or MCAT, and graduating from medical school. We controlled for the student's high school rank, which we standardized to also control for different sizes of high schools, their SAT scores, gender, and race. These variables were controlled because we didn't want them confounding our results when we tried to figure out which type of GPA was more effective at predicting college success. Here are our results. For predicting college GPA, unweighted GPAs were better at um, making that prediction than weighted GPAs for these students. SAT scores, gender, and race for some study members were also predictors of college GPA. When predicting completion of the pre-med program, neither type of high school GPA was able um, to make that prediction, though gender and race for some study members were predictors of completing the pre-med program. When we tried to predict MCAT scores, only SAT scores were useful. Neither type of high school GPA was helpful in predicting MCAT scores at all. Also, only SAT scores and gender were good predictors of medical school graduation. 
Neither type of high school GPA was helpful in making this prediction. To sum up, of the four measures of college success, unweighted GPAs were better at predicting one, college GPA, and weighted GPAs were not able to predict any outcomes. So in a head-to-head -head contest, unweighted GPAs win. But the big surprise for us was that SAT scores were the best predictors of college success. For three of our four outcomes, the SAT was a good predictor of educational outcomes after high school. This shows that even with our sample, which all came from low-income households and was disproportionately students of color, the SAT is an excellent predictor of college success. What does all of this mean for viewers? First, my co-authors and I recommend against weighting GPAs. Unweighted GPAs seem to be better predictors of college success. Second, high school GPAs are only useful in predicting short-term college outcomes. They were not good at predicting outcomes that occurred four years or more after high school. Finally, standardized test scores like the SAT provide valuable information that cannot be gleaned from high school transcripts. This is a short summary of our study. I encourage you to read the original article in NASP Bulletin, which will provide you with much more detail about our study and our findings. Thanks for watching my video about our research.